Do you know about spread? Spread is a meal made in prison using whatever is available, reimagined and prepared in a new kind of culinary concoction. Spread can contain whatever people have, but the recipes I've seen call for ingredients such as ramen noodles, chips, cheese sauce, and beans. This bus was originally designed to confine, hold, and transport prisoners around the state. It wasn't a mobile kitchen. But that's not to say that there was never food on the bus. Judging from the number of relish and mustard packets I've found up and down this bus, close to a million hot dogs were once consumed on this prison bus during its 16 years of use by the Department of Corrections. Well, with the new kitchen I'm putting in, there will be a chance to upgrade beyond hot dogs to spread. Quality, gourmet, spread. After sketching some plans, I started cutting plywood to build up the kitchen unit piece by piece. This kitchen cabinet is situated over and around the water tank and pump unit, so it took some creative carpentry to make it all work together. And I bolted things to the walls and floors just to keep everything in place. So at about the halfway point in building these cabinets in the kitchen, I wanted to stop and just give an overview of my floor plan and just say a little bit about what kind of design I'm going for inside the bus. All right, so overall there are gonna be five areas in the bus. All right, so the first zone is up front. That's gonna be what you encounter when you first come on the bus. And there'll be the power cabinet that I built in the last video and a kind of like a smallish fold out couch. The second zone is gonna be the kitchen area and I've got the kitchen counter over here and then there's going to be a fold up table on this side and uh, back here you'll have a, a refrigerator and a little bit more storage. And then the third zone is this bathroom area, shower on this side and toilet and sink over here. And the fourth zone is a bed, a bedroom I guess you could call it right here and that'll be a little bit elevated with some storage underneath. And then the fifth zone all the way in the back of the bus is a storage locker garage kind of thing. There'll be a wall here and a small portal window, maybe even a door that opens into the bedroom area. But this is back here is gonna be for storage. All right, so those are the five areas in the bus, but what's the overall style? There's a lot of space on a 40 foot bus. It's not a tiny house. It's not a really small platform. It's a really big space. I also just love the natural light in this bus. It's a dark day today, but on a sunny day, the light just pours in these windows. So I'm keeping as many of these windows functional and bringing light in the bus as I possibly can. There will be a few windows that get blocked out just because uh, of the shower area and the bathroom area and a big cabinet for my refrigerator. But basically as planned, and right now, this area is gonna be full of a lot of natural light and just a few built elements. At this point, I needed to put a face on the cabinet but I was out of three quarter inch stock and had to dig through the dreaded wood shelves. After some digging, I finally found some good wood to rip into strips for that face, so it was back in action. So with that, the face is on this cabinet and it's pretty much ready to go for now. I obviously need to put drawers in it still and a couple of doors on that side and maybe a couple kind of mini cubbies on the side with all the plumbing and everything. Uh, and then I'll just put the top on it. And because I built the cabinets a bit deeper than the top, 
so that the whole thing would match up with my 24 inch deep wheel bumps. I needed to fill a space back behind that countertop. And this is where I took a sort of weird tangent. I glued up some strips I had left over from my floor job, cut them to length, and was hopeful that a big old DIY hunk of plywood behind the counter would look great. As the glue dried, I started to install the rest of that kitchen sink waistline as those pipes needed to be buried beneath the cabinetry. The next day with the glue dry, I tried out that big DIY hunk of plywood and immediately didn't like it. It just didn't look good. So I set it aside and slipped another piece of one inch thick wood back behind that countertop and it looked pretty good. So I got my biscuit joiner out and built up a backsplash kind of thing on top of it. While waiting for that glue to dry, next up was the bus's main storage cabinet, situated between the kitchen sink area and the shower. It started raining like crazy in the middle of this job, and I was happy to see that my newly resealed windows were keeping things nice and dry inside the bus. Love that. The contents of these basic shelves will be hidden behind a couple of doors that I have yet to build. And I think I'm gonna build all the doors for the bus at once Though, I think I've been telling Melissa that same thing regarding the cabinet doors inside our house. But anyway. If you're wondering what I'm doing here, I find that a circular saw makes straighter, more vertically square cuts than a jigsaw. So I started out with the circular saw, cut all the straight sides, and then finished up with the jigsaw. Cabinets are not entirely done, but they're at a good stopping point. Next up, more cabinets and a bathroom on the bus that will have a bit more privacy than the last time around. 
And thank you for watching, commenting, liking, subscribing, and sharing.